be a little late on our video upload because I forgot to hit record. So we're going to join that in the <laughs> bottom of the first inning on YouTube tomorrow. Sorry about that. 2-2 pitch coming to Harris. Swung on, hit shortstop side. Patrick up with it, throws across. This time, a little better throw. Retire Harris, 6-3 for out number three. The Rams, however, do score a run. And they do so on one hit, one error, and one left on base. Dalton Wolfram with that RBI single. Gives the Rams an early 1-0 lead. So after one here at Drew Field at Sonora High School, Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows the Sonora Rams 1 and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs nothing. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Back at Defiance. Rams with an early 1-0 lead over the Bulldogs. Coach Braden Renner, coaching at third, went down to get the lineup early on and Coach Braden was in there. Kind of look around and he's just looking like, uh, Coach, Coach, where's the coach? <laughs> coach, Coach Sauter looks like he just got out of class. Number four, Taylor Shrek. Like he's about 20 years old. <laughs> I'm sure he's a lot older. He's probably, he is. I'm just saying, he's a baby faced. <laughs> coach Sauter. Fantastic program he's building over there at Columbus Grove. Pitch by Plasman. Is a bit low and inside to Taylor Schrader. Four, five, and six. Taylor Schrader, Kyle Hopkins, and Dalton Worth to face Eli Plasman. Plasman's 1 0 pitch swung on and fouled back. One ball, one strike. Seems like we're just in fast forward here at Sonora High School. Everything's just moving <laughs> really quick. Plasman gets the sign. 1 1 pitch coming to Schrader. Schrader swings, drills it deep center field. Gusweiler going back. Back she goes, and it's gone. Taylor Schrader with a solo home run over the 2014 state champ sign over there in left center field. Schrader came in with a 300 average, 14 runs batted in, and seven stolen bases. Usually I don't write down home runs unless it stands out. Schrader with his second home run and now has 15 runs batted in. Kyle Hopkins steps in, 328 with 12 RBIs and 12 steals on the season. For those of you just joining us after Plasman throws his pitch, give you a little summary. Outside. But usually I don't write down stolen bases unless like your your Aiden Mosier who stands out with four or fifteen for the Rams. One oh pitch coming to Hopkins from Plasman. That's high and away, ball two. But this is this is like I said during the signs excavating pregame. Thomas Grove has hundred stolen bases as a team. Two oh pitch, strike called. So after each player I had to write down the stolen base amount. Like I said, I normally don't do that unless it's maybe one or two. Two, one pitch. Outside corner. Strike call. Two balls and two strikes. The top two players, Hoffman and, and uh, Hawker, have 40 combined. Swung on and missed. Plasman retires Kyle Hopkins for the first out of the inning. Dalton Worth going to step in. 355 for Worth. 12 runs batted in and 9 stolen bases for Dalton Worth. But Shep Hawker and Brock Hoffman, that's a 1-2 combo. We want to keep off the bases. First pitch swinging, ground ball to Ward. Ward throws it over to Whipkin in time to retire Dalton Worth. 
Five three on the putout for out number two. It's going to bring up the number seven hitter, the pitcher, Bretton Renner. So Renner, 242, 15 runs batted and nine stolen bases for Renner. First pitch, tap third base side. Ward scoops it up, throws over, just a bit off. Nice tag over there by Trent Wimpkin. Wimpkin came off the bag just to make sure he caught the ball, slapped the tag on Renner as he went by. So back-to-back -back putouts by Ward ends the inning for the Bulldogs. In the inning for Columbus Grove, they go quickly. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, no runners left on base. Oh, yeah. no, I'm sorry, there was a run. Let me go back there. The inning just went too fast. There was a solo home run. So let me erase all that. In the inning for Columbus Grove, one run, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Taylor Schrader with that solo home run has tied the game at one as we head to the bottom of the second inning here on the Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Tenora High School, bottom of the second inning, we are tied at one, six, seven, and eight to face Brett and Renner. First pitch to Bosselman is outside. Ball one. Bosselman, McQuillan, and Plasman to face Brenton Renner. Renner winds it up. Pitch is a strike. Count evens one ball and one strike. Brenton Renner, one of eight seniors on the Bulldogs. Outside. Two balls and a strike. Bosselman, sophomore, bats from the right side. 2 1 pitch. Ball three. Hunter with two doubles on Saturday at Kaleida. Rams just couldn't get the clutch hit Saturday. Lost to the Wildcats by a score of two to one. Corbin Castillo with a fantastic pitching performance got the loss. Pitch is high. So Hunter Bosselman draws a leadoff walk. He trots down the first base. That's going to bring up Mason McQuillan. The first at bat for McQuillan. Mason McQuillan. This season, as far as I can tell. McQuillan made a nice play in the first inning. Retired Bo Burnesser. Nice strong throw by McQuillan. On the shortstop side to second base. Pitch to McQuillan is inside. Ball one. Runner at first for the Rams. Hunter Balsaman, nobody out. Tied at one here in the bottom of inning number two here at Grubel Field at Tenora High School. Runner comes set. Pitch outside corner, strike called. One ball and one strike to the Rams' second baseman, Mason McQuillan. 71 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. Runner spins and throws over to first base. Back standing is Hunter Bosselman. McQuillan squares around the bunt, bunts it back this way. Strike two to Mason McCullen. One ball and two strikes. Back here tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Patrick Henry Patriots come in. Pitch to McCullen. Fouls it off. Over the first base dugout. Count stays at one and two. Last year over at Patrick Henry, I think Tristan Burks was on the mound and fired a one-hitter at the Patriots. One, two, pitch coming to McQuillan from Brenton Renner. Up and in. Throw down to first base. Bosselman with a head first dive back in the first base safely. Four, 
Landon Schrader behind the plate. Taylor Schrader at first. Pitch to McQuillan, fouled back again. Logan staying alive. Two balls and two strikes to McQuillan. Bo Bernerser at second. Aiden Patrick is short. Taylor Schrader is at third for the Bulldogs. Worth, Hoffman, and Hopkins, the Bulldog outfield. Runners 2-2, pitch coming to McQuillan. Fouls it off again. First base side, out of play. Rams with a run in the first inning. And a solo home run in the top of the second by Taylor Schrader has tied the game at one. Caden Radzik scored the Rams run in the first inning. That's an unearned run. McQuillan swings, hits a high fly ball to right field. Hopkins camps underneath it. He had plenty of time. McQuillan nailed that one straight into the air for out number one. Plate, number two, Eli. Plasman steps in. Eli on the season. 250 average. Plasman on the mound. Two and one on the season. Runner at first now with one out is Hunter Bosselman. Runner comes set. First pitch. Another throw down to first base. By Landon Schrader. You almost think that Clay Pittman was back there firing the ball all over the place. And big Red Jimenez. One of the Rams catchers of the pass. You couldn't get a couple feet off the base, so they were going to throw the ball all over the place. 1-0 pitch is low. Two balls and no strikes to Eli Plasman. Like all the Rams catchers the last 15 years that I can think of, they all had a heck of an arm behind the plate. 2-0 to Plasman. Inside. Called a strike. Plasman leaned back out of the way. The home plate umpire called that the inside strike. Two balls and one strike to Plasman. Bosselman leads a first throw over by Renner. Bosselman back safely. Ar, 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 ar. Yeah, I hear a turkey. He's on your way. 2-1 pitch. Bosselman stays put. Plasman. Foul ball first base side out of play. Two balls and two strikes to Eli. One out. Runner at first base is Hunter Bosselman. Brent Renner gets the sign from Landon Schrader. Come set. 2-2 pitch coming to Plasman. Swung on, fouled off, first base side out of play. Queen McQuillan and Plasman, they probably spent about 12 pitches here on foul balls. Renner gets the sign. 2-2 pitch to Plasman. Swung on and missed. Little off-speed pitch got Plasman for out number two. Second strikeout for Bretton Renner. Going to bring up the number nine hitter, Grady Gusweiler. Grady digs in, bats from the right side. 282. Pitch to, Bo or pitch to Grady is a Ball, or it's going to actually call a strike, yes. Bosselman, a decent lead at first base. 0-1 pitch coming to Gus Weiler. Hits. Shortstop side. Patrick scoops it up underhands to Bernister at second to retire the Rams in the second inning. Fort Tenora, no runs, no hits, no errors. They leave one on base after two innings of play here at Tenora High School. At Group Field on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. They're tied. <laughs> At one. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. 
BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-6894. Back at Groove Field, top of the third inning we go. 8-9 and then the top for Columbus Grove. First baseman, Isaac Ricker. Landon Schrader, then the top, Brock Hoffman to face Eli Plasman. Both teams, one run on one hit. Bulldogs have the only error in the game, which led to the Rams' run in the bottom of the first. Senior righty Plasman winds it up. First pitch, check swing to Ricker. Strike one or ball. I guess that was an appeal to first base. I officially thought he called it a strike. One ball pitch coming to Isaac Ricker. Strike on the outside corner. Evens account at one and one. Okay. Okay. Do you have um, catch up and stuff? One, one. Pitches low. Two balls and one strike to the number eight hitter, Isaac Ricker. Ricker, 267, 15 RBIs and five yep. steals. Yeah, sure is. Plasman's 2 1. Hit right back through the box in the center field it goes. That's going to be a leadoff single for Isaac Ricker. And as I said, the 100 stolen bases of the team, anybody that reaches base is a threat to go. Good test for the Rams' backstop. Well, Dalton said. Wolfram. Number nine hitter, Landon Schrader, steps in. 288, nine runs batted in, and four steals for Schrader. Schrader's behind the plate. Throw over to first base. Back is Ricker. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, whether you're watching or listening. Appreciate everybody on this Friday late afternoon for joining us. Another throw over. Back safely is Ricker. Wind. Going from right to left field, unlike last night, literally the entire game, the entire time I was here, there was no wind whatsoever. I'm going to knock him. No Plasman's pitch is a ball. I'll just use your shirt. One ball and no strikes, like, like John, as John said. <laughs> Probably the first time in the history of any athletic event at Tenora High School there was no wind involved. 1-0 pitch by Plasman. He throws over to first base. Back safely is Ricker. It, Plasman comes set. 1-0 coming to Schrader. Drilled left field. Mosier gives chase and it's foul. Back to first base goes Isaac Ricker. Landon Schrader comes back, grabs the bat. Up there, Patrick is your second baseman. Shep Hawker is DH and for Eden Patrick. Plasman checks the runner. 1-1 one, one pitch. Outside, nice stop by Wolfram. Two balls and one strike to Landon Schrader. When you say somebody just has four steals, <laughs> Schrader just has four steals for Columbus Grove. 2-1 pitch coming. Schrader drills it. Right center field. Gus Weiler and Harris. Harris cuts in front of Grady and makes the catch. And not sure if there was miscommunication out there, but that was a split second away from being a disaster out there. So Harris retires Schrader for the first out. F9 on the put out. Harris came in from right, just full speed. Grady came in full speed from center. Pitch to Brock Hoffman is fouled off. Grady must have heard Luke at the very last split second because Harris darted in front of Grady to put it away for the first out. Another throw to first base back safely is Ricker. Saw that in the girls game a couple weeks ago where they had a collision in the outfield. Shot 
not inside the bag at third. Mosier goes over, cuts it off by the line. Nice throw in. Going to hold Isaac Ricker at second. Brock Hoffman stops at first with the single. So the Bulldogs have runners at first and second with one out. Number two hitter, your DH, Shep Hawker. Hawker, 419, three runs batted in and 20 steals on the season. He is 0 for 1, grounded to Taryn Ward in the first inning. Plasman comes set, looks back at the runner, pitch outside, ball one. To Shep Hawker. Pitch outside, ball two. We give credit to Coach Sauter, Braden Sauter. If you got the runners in high school baseball, take advantage of it. But it takes a really good throw for a catcher to throw you out at second or third base. And not to be repetitive, but as a team, they have 100 steals in 20 games. That's five a game. Pitch drilled down the line in left center field. That's going to be trouble. Scoring is Ricker. Right behind him is Hoffman. He slides into third safely. Hawker with a RBI double gives the Bulldogs a 2-1 lead. Brock Hoffman's at third. Jump Hawker is at second. That's going to bring up the number three hitter, Bo Burnesser. Burnesser. Grounded to McQuillan in the first. That was a heck of a play by McQuillan in the first inning to retire Burnesser. One out. Plasman in a little bit of trouble here with runners at second and third for the Bulldogs. Come set. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Plasman winds it up. His 1-0 pitch outside. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. That hit about three feet in front of the plate. But definitely a kind of a tournament tune-up for the Rams here. Three of the last four games against extremely quality opponents. 2-0 pitch coming. Swung on drilled center field. Gus Weiler comes in, has to play it on a hop. Scoring is Brock Hoffman to give the Bulldogs a 3-1 lead. Three singles in the inning. RBI single by Burnesser. Taylor Schrader. Chubb Hawker stopped at third. Bo Burnesser on at first. Bring up number four hitter, Taylor Schrader. Schrader, the third baseman. 300, 14 RBIs and seven steals. Got a solo home run in the second. Out comes Rams pitching coach, Eric Tipton. Coach Tipton out from the dugout. Unlike yesterday when... Coach Renolette came out in the first inning. That conversation was not about pitching, I assure you. <laughs> Rams had a little defensive lapse. Came out, addressed it, and marched back to the dugout. On this one, when Coach Tipton comes out, it was about mechanics. And what we're going to do here, because like we said with uh, the fleet-footed Bulldogs here, Bo Burnesser definitely going to take off for second base. Taylor Schrader digs in. He went deep over the 2014 state champ sign. His first at bat for a solo home run. 3-1 Bulldogs here in the third. First pitch pop up to right field. Harris camps underneath it. Throw to the plate. Nice throw by Luke. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. But Harris with a laser to the plate. Holds the runner at third, so Taylor Schrader is retired. F9 on the put out for the second out of the inning. That's a huge out. Kyle Hopkins steps in, 328, 12 RBIs and 12 steals for Hopkins. He struck out his first at bat. Runners at the corners with two outs now. Plasman comes set. Pitch to Hopkins is outside, ball one. Plasman looks at the runner, Burnesser at first. Throw over. Not in time. Close play over there. 
Donald Worth on deck for the Bulldogs. Plasman's 1-0 inside pitch. Swung on and miss. Count to Kyle Hopkins as a ball and a strike. Two runs here in the third for Columbus Grove. They lead 3-1. Runners at the corners with two outs. Plasman's 1-1. One, one, swung on and missed. Strike two. Plasman checks the runner at first. Checks again. Come set. 1-2 to Kyle Hopkins. Plasman steps off. to the plate. There goes the runner. Warfram just hangs on to the ball. Down to second base goes Bo Burnesser with a stolen base. His sixth on the season. So Burnesser is in scoring possession. Bulldogs at second and third now. Two balls and two strikes to count to Kyle Hopkins. Plasman comes set. Pitch to Hopkins. Little fly ball. Foul territory. Wimpkin over there. Puts it away in the coaching box to retire the Bulldogs. Unassisted put out by the first baseman for out number three. In the inning for the Bulldogs, they take the lead. They get two runs, and they do so on four singles. No Ram errors. The Bulldogs leave two. After two and a half here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, Crop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard shows the Columbus Grove Bulldogs three and the Tenor Rams one. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Sonora High School, Rams with a little bit of work to do. They trail 3-1 to one as they head to the bottom of inning number three. For the Rams, top of the order, order one, two, and three, Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram to face Brenton Renner. Mosier grounded back to Renner his first plate appearance. Bulldogs actually is kind of a copy of like some of your past Ram teams. Very good record, 16 and four. They have quality starters, probably two or three number ones. First pitch to Mosier is a strike. Solid defense. Very well coached. And eight seniors. Check swing inside. Kind of reminds you of the Rams team last year with Wolfram, Camaso, and Schaefer on the mound. One ball, one strike to Mosier. Brenton Renner winds it up inside. <laughs> Somehow Mosier got out of the way. Kind of almost went right through his shirt. Two balls and one strike to Aiden Mosier. Mosier digs back in, bats from the left side. Renner's pitch swung on, fouled off first base side. Two balls and two strikes to the Rams left fielder, Aiden Mosier. Come on, six. Renner gets the sign. Pitch to the plate. Tap foul. Third base side right on the groove field. I'm going to keep battling. Font here at Tenor High School. In comparison, the Rams have half as many steals as Columbus Grove. Rams with 50. 2-2 pitch from Renner to Mosier. Drilled center field. That's going to be a base hit. Falls in front of Brock Hoffman. Mosier on with a leadoff single to start the Rams' third inning here. Radzik steps in. Rams shortstop Caden Radzik for 15. Where he stole an error in the first inning and came around to score on a Dalton Wolfram opposite field single. 
3-1 Bulldogs here in the bottom of the third inning. Those are always a threat to go. Renner comes set. Pitch up and in. So the Rams played Kaleida on Saturday. Boulder, the Wildcats have 13 wins at the time. 1-0 pitch coming to Radzik. Throw over. Mosier with the head first dive back safely. Playing a very quality Columbus Grove team today with 16 wins. And tomorrow, Patrick Henry comes in at 13-3. and three. Up and in. Got Mosier caught. Throw down to first base. Mosier just takes off for second. So Mosier with a very bizarre stolen base. So Mosier with his 16th steal on the season. Two balls and no strikes to Caden Radzik. So Mosier in scoring position with nobody out. Brenton Renner comes set, looks back at Mosier at second. Pitch to Radzik, strike called. Two balls and one strike to Caden Radzik. Runners 2-1. Radzik squares around the bunt. Bunts it right back to Radzik. Right back to the pitcher. Renner. Renner turns and fires at third base. Trying to get Mosier. And Mosier's in there safe. Make that hurt. So Mosier's on at third. Radzik's on at first on the fielder's choice. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram with an RBI single. His first plate appearance. So Rams with runners at the corners with nobody out. Trailing by two here in the bottom of the third inning. Brenton Renner, the ball is bunted right back to him. All he had to do was throw to first base because Mosier took off as soon as the ball was on the ground. Renner comes set. Pitch to Dalton Wolfram. Strike called on the black of the plate on the outside corner. Radzik decent lead at first. Renner comes set. There goes Radzik. Pitch. Throw down to third base. Gets by the third baseman. Goes into left field. Mosier gets back up, and he's going to score. So Mosier scores on the air. Errant throw down to third base. Air on the catcher on that one. E2. Radzik was going on the pitch. He winds up at second. Rams have cut the lead to 3-2. to two. One ball and two strikes is the count to Dalton Wolfram. And as Schrader just fired down the third base. I don't think he had a chance to get Mosier. Check swing by Wolfram. He holds it back. Count two balls and two strikes. Outside. Two balls and two strikes this time. I guess I was wrong, which I am quite a bit of the time. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes now to Dalton Wolfram. Renner comes set. Lead from seconds. Radzik smash right back through the box in the center field. Radzik. Got him, go. Ball gets by the center fielder. Hoffman. Radzik takes the turn. He's going to score. Wolfram with another RBI single with a smash into center field. Coach Renner I think, was initially going to stop Radzik. Hoffman came charging in, bobbled it. BR saw that and told Caden to get on his horse, and he did. We are tied at three here in the third. Bring up Taryn Ward. Ward struck out in the first. You got your condiments over there. Wolfram, there he goes. Throw down to second. Wolfram, head first dive into second base. Wolfram with a stolen base. What's that? Striker ball. I go. Pitch to Karen Ward was a strike. Renner comes set. 0-1 pitch to Ward is high. Count evens one ball and one strikes. The Rams have tied the game at three with a two spot here. Still nobody out. Wolfram at second. Ward at the plate. Harris on deck. Renner steps off. Coach Braden Sauter can't be happy with his team's not really defense. It's more the, I guess, reaction and their thought process of what they're doing here. 
Errant throws. And then a little bit of bobble in center field by Hoffman. You can't fault Hoffman on that. He just came in charging full speed, trying to gun down Radzik at the plate. If there was going to be a play, but I think, like I said, BR was going to stop Caden at third until he saw the bobble. Pitch to Ward is high. Two balls and one strike. Pitch to Ward. Foul off out of play. Two balls and two strikes to the Rams third baseman, senior Taryn Ward. Two balls, two strikes. War. Dalton Wolfram leads from second. Renner comes set. Pitch coming to Ward. That's low. Gets away from the catcher. Landon Schneider tried to block it. He could not. Down to third base on the wild pitch goes Dalton Wolfram. The wheels kind of falling off here in the third inning for the Bulldogs. So a very fundamentally sound team. Coach Sauter cannot be happy with his team's play this inning. Payoff pitch coming to Ward. That's low and outside. Ball four. So Taron Ward trots down the first base on the walk. Now batting number one, Luke. Luke Harris steps in. Harris grounded on a fielder's choice to the shortstop in the first 340 on the season for Luke. Harris steps in with runners at the corners. Nobody out. Pitch to Luke is high and away. Ball one. Karen Ward at first. Dalton Wolfram on at third. Hunter Bosselman awaits on deck for the Ram attack. Runner comes set. Pitch to Harris, little tapper, third base side. Third baseman holds the runner, doesn't make a throw. Infield single for Luke Harris, loads him up. up Taylor Schrader came in, made a nice play. Field of the ball, looked at the runner. And by the time he looked up, Harris was flying across the base at first base. So Wolfram is on at third, Ward's at second, and Harris is on at first. Hunter Bosselman with a walk is... First plate appearance digs in. Outside, ball one. Tied to three. Rams have the bases loaded and nobody out here in the bottom of the third. Brenton Renner winds up. His 1-0 pitch outside. Backhanded stab by Landon Schrader. Saved a run. Renner came in with the ERA of 3.87. It's three and one. With the bases loaded, Renner works out of the windup. 2-0 pitch. Tapper first base side steps on the base. Comes no throw home. Scoring is Wolfram on the fielder's choice. So Dalton Wolfram scores the third run of the inning. That's an RBI for Bosselman. He is retired at first base for the first out. Three unassisted. Moving up, Taron Ward at third. Luke Harris down to second. It's going to bring up Mason McQuillan. McQuillan goes down to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Coach Renolette in this situation. Rams with a three spot here in the third. Lead four to three. Three runs, five hits, two errors for the Bulldogs. Four runs, five hits, airless ball for the Rams. Renner winds it up. Pitch to McQuillan. His strike called. McQuillan starting at second base for the Rams with Plasma on the mound. 0 1 pitch. Corners around the button. Bunts it back to the mound in the air. They're going to double off Wolfram. So McQuillan bunted the ball in the air right back to Renner. Fired it back to third base to Taylor Schrader, who stepped on the bag. Retiring the Rams here in the third, but Tenora does some damage. They score three runs. They do that three hits. And in the air, in the field for the Bulldogs. I don't have any errors. I'll check here in a bit, but the Rams just leave one on base after the double play. So after three innings of play here at Groove Field at Tenora High School, it is the 
Sonora Rams 4 and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs 3 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back at Group Field, Rams with that three spot in the third have a 4-3 to three lead. There was one error in the, in the just one error, but there was a multiple mental errors for the Bulldogs in that inning. Plasman winds it up. First pitch is inside for a ball. Six, seven, and eight. Worth Brenton Renner and Isaac Ricker to face Eli Plasman. 1-0 pitch by Plasman. Catches the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Bulldogs with Two last inning, the Rams rallied for three. They lead by one, four to three. Bulldogs batting here in the top of the fourth. Plasman with a little off-speed pitch. Catches the outside corner again. One ball and two strikes to Dalton Worth. Worth 355 coming in. 0 for 1. Plasman's 1-2. Swung on and missed. Down goes Worth for the first out here in the inning. Or Plasman, that's his second strikeout. Going to bring up the number seven hitter, pitcher Brenton Renner. Renner, 242, 15 runs batted in and nine stolen bases. Also grounded to Terran Ward at third his last time up. First pitch is outside. Ball one. one oh pitch. Swung on. Skied on the infield. Caden Radzik calls it. Puts it away for out number two. Pop up to the shortstop. The number eight hitter. Number eight. Isaac Ricker steps in. Ricker playing at first base for the Bulldogs and Coach Sauter. 267, 15 RBIs and five stolen bases for Isaac Ricker. Plasman winds it up. First pitch is a little bit low. Ball one. One zero pitch. Outside. Ball two. Beautiful day here at Sonora High School after about three or four, for lack of better terms, crappy days. 2-0 pitch outside corner. Two balls and one strike. Just caught the... The shade of the black on that one. 2-1 oh, pitch coming from Plasma inside. That one backs Ricker back. 3-1 to the first baseman. Isaac Ricker on deck is Landon Schrader. Plasma's 3-1 strike called. That's a full count. Three two pitch swung on bounding ball first base side. I nice stop by Wimpkin. Wimpkin slides just short of the line, knocked it down, scooped it up, and was a race to the bag. He beat Ricker there. Three unassisted on the put out for the inning for the Bulldogs. They go very quickly in the inning. No runs, no hits, no ram errors. Nobody left on base. Bottom of the fourth we go here at Group Field. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows the Rams on top by a score of four to three. 
Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiance Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back here, 001 count to Plasman already. Next pitch is a ball. Count to Eli is one ball and one strike. Eight, nine, and one for the Rams this, e this inning to face Brenton Renner. Pitch is strike called. Plasma not happy about that. Coach, <laughs> Coach Renouette not in agreement as well. Pitch to Eli. That one's outside. You can't have both sides of the plate. Now, if that would have been a strike three crawl called, we have uh, some unhappy people. Runners 2-2 two, two to Eli. That's high and away. Ball three. <laughs> Columbus Grove people not happy now, but you can't have the inside corner and the outside corner. You're not a pitcher of the Atlanta Braves 90s pitching staff here. Full count to Plasma. That's strike three call. That's right down Broadway there. Number 25, Grady Gusweiler. Grady steps in. 0 for 1, crowned into a fielder's choice in the second. Pittsburgh Sioux, thank you for watching as always. Runner winds up. First pitch to Grady. This is a bit high. Ball 1. Aiden Moser on deck for the Rams. Rams with a 4-3 lead as they bat here in the fourth. Breaking ball inside corner. Strike call to Grady. One ball and one strike to Gus Weiler. One out. Base is empty. Rams with a 4-3 lead. Runners pitch to Gus Weiler. A little bit low. Two balls and one strike. Both sides unhappy this inning. <laughs> Red runners pitch to Gus Weiler. A little tapper. Third base side. Third baseman cuts in front of the shortstop. Throw over in time by Taylor Schrader. Gets Gus Weiler by a half a step for out number two. The ground ball softly hit third base side. Aiden Patrick, the shortstop for the Bulldogs, was in position. Taylor Schrader cut in front and fired over to first base to Isaac Ricker to get the speedy Gus Weiler for the second out. Top of the lineup, Aiden Mosier steps in. Mosier, one for two. First pitch to Mosier is a strike. Singled in the third, stole the base, and came around and scored on an error by the catcher. Landon Schrader for the Bulldogs tried to get Mosier leaning off of third base and the throw went into left field. Mosier hopped up and scored for the Rams. Pitch to Aiden's foul back. No balls and two strikes to the Rams left fielder. Coach Renolette coaching at third. Coach Tipton coaching at first. BR picked up Tenora win 400 last night here versus the Big Green. Runners 0-2 to Mosier fouled off. Third base side out of play. No. Now Columbus Grove, you said, comes in at 16 and 4. You look at the size of the crowd that Columbus Grove brought on Friday night to compare the crowd that out of the hill and the big green brought last night. Pitch goes to the backstop. One ball and two strikes. Audeville filled the entire stands over here last night. And now tonight, there's just a just a few. Columbus Grove fans over there. Probably all watching us and listening, I'm guessing. <laughs> I give the big green credit. That's not a that's not a, a, a quick drive from Ottaville last night on a Thursday night. Pitch to Mosier is outside. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. Two outs here. Nobody on. Rams lead 4-3 here in the bottom of the fourth. So big green fans, we give you credit for making the trip last night. Check swing. Ball pops out of the glove for Landon Schrader. Count goes full at 3-2. and two. Caden Radzik awaits on deck. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here. You can hear that in our crowd mic down below. Other than Ned and Coach Rudder eating peanuts down there. 
the 3-2 pitch to Mosier. Little soft fly ball, left field. Left fielder comes in, makes the play right on the line. Dalton Wolf, or, or Dalton Wolf from Dalton Worth with a nice running catch to put away the third out for Aiden Mosier. In the inning for the Rams in the fourth, no runs for Tenora. They go quickly in order. No hits, no errors, and nobody left. Heading to the top of the fifth inning here at Groob Field. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, Tenora 4 and Columbus Grove 3. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Fired Stone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Top of the fifth inning we go. She's all right, you know. Nine, one, and two for the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. Landon Schrader, then the top, Brock Huffman and Shep Hawker. I was working. I was working. Schrader, 0 for 1, comes in with a 288 average. Plasman still on the mound for Tenora, pitching effectively. Eli winds it up. First pitch is foul back. Strike one. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. I, I appreciate that very much. You know, I, I don't know how far your truck is, but if you oh, take no. it to your truck, yeah. take the Plasman's 0-1 coming to Schrader. Okay. Landon Schrader. Yeah. The ball one. Count evens at one and one. Which we're kind of briefly discussing between innings. We don't really have a lot of time to talk up here in between innings, but one one pitch coming. Ground ball off of Plasman's hip. Deflects to Radzik. Radzik scoops it up. Fires over. Not in time. Nice play by Radzik. Nice hustle by Schrader. Line shot. One hop off of Plasman's right hip. Deflected to Radzik. Radzik scooped it up. The cut of the grass. Well, where the cut of the grass would be. And fired over to first base. But not in time to get Landon Schrader. So Schrader with an infield single. Starts the top of the fifth. Top of the lineup. Brock Huffman. Hoffman is one for two, singled and scored in the third. Plasman comes set. First pitch is fouled back. But over the last ten years, honestly, we can't. I, I can only remember a handful of games that the Rams have not been competitive in, where the game's only going five innings. I can think of a couple. Throw over. And as I, as I jokingly told John, those were usually post-prom games <laughs> that when the Rams had their prom on Friday night, they, were, they would have an 11 o'clock start <laughs> for whatever reason. And that would never really go well most times. But Plasman's 0-1 to uh, Brock Huffman outside. One ball and one strike. But uh, in the last 10 years in Northwest Ohio, there's <laughs> probably not a... Other obviously defiance, more competitive team than Snore Rams and Coach Renolette. Outside. Two balls and one strike, Ruck Hoffman. Definitely not the most talented team that Coach Renolette's had, but you look down and you see the Rams coming in at thirteen and three. Plasman's two one, fouled off first base side. Wimpkin gives chase and it's out of his reach. Two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter, Brooke Huffman. Just three seniors on this Rams baseball team. Throw over, a little bit high. Wimpkin slaps the tag on the runner, but he's back safely. Nice play to end the last inning by Trent Wimpkin down there at first. 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Plasman to Huffman. Throws the bat on the ball. Fouls it off first base side. Out of play. Nice way to spend a Friday evening. Sunny, 70 degrees, minimal wind. 
and baseball here at Tenor High School. Plasman comes set, checks the runner at first. 2-2 two, two pitch to Hoffman. Fouled back. Hoffman staying alive. They're trying to set a record for foul balls in this game. It's <laughs> probably been 30. Hopefully BR is going to get another dozen baseballs from the back back corner of the dugout there. Plasman throws over to first base. Back with the head first dive is Landon Schrader. No, I wouldn't do that. Right. Pitch, little blooper over Radzik going out, puts it away, falls to one knee. Nice play by the Rams shortstop, Caden Radzik. Little soft liner, shallow left field. Radzik went racing out and put it away for the first out, retiring Brock Huffman. Shep Hawker steps in. Hawker is 0 for, or 1 for 2. The double in RBI had a double in the third. Plasman comes set. First pitch to Shep outside. Ball one. Yeah, we did. 12 and 3 is the Rams record. I think I said 13 and 3. But Smora comes in at 12 and 3. Shot in the gap. Gets by Gus Weiler. That's going to roll all the way to the fence. Grady back there. Slides. Throws it in. Radzik. No, no, no. Holds the relay. <laughs> Double in the gap. Schrader stopped at third. Back to back doubles there for Shep Hawkler. He checks in at second. Up to the bring up the number three hitter. Bo Burnesser steps in. He had a double in an RBI in the third. 4 3. Rams lead by one here in the top of the fifth. One out. Very precarious situation here for Tenora. Plasman has gone the distance thus far. Three runs on seven hits. Little tapper to Ward at third. Taron feels it. Comes home. They got the runner in the rundown. Throw back to Ward. Puts the tag on the runner. Nice play by Taron Ward at third base. Alertly saw the runner come home. Threw to Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram chased him back towards Taron. Threw the ball. Taron slapped the tag on Landon Schrader for out number two. Number zero, Taylor Schrader. So Burnesser is on at first base on the fielder's choice. Holding at second base was Hawkler. He had nowhere to go, so Taylor Schrader steps in. Schrader with a solo home run in the second. Flew out to Harris in the third. Plasman comes set. Pitch. Ground ball shortstop side. Radzik dives. Nice job. Fields it. Has nowhere to go, but he saved a run. Saved a run right That's an infield single, but a heck of a play by Caden Radzik at short. Nice job. Way to save a run. To the plate, number nine, Kyle Hopkins. I'll let him have a crap bone, so you Base is loaded. Landon Schrader at third. Shep Hawkler at first. And at first base is Bo Burnesser. Somebody make a Kyle Hopkins. Steps in. Pitch is a little bit high. Ball one. There you go. Pitch swung on a little shallow fly ball. Harris comes in. Wimpkin comes out. It falls. Foul ball. That's a foul ball. ball. Woo! That's a foul ball. Foul ball. Rams dodged a bullet there. That's a foul ball. Come on. Woo! You guys are going to make that call. Make that call. Well, well, maybe it's not a foul ball. I don't know. Right down the line. Right. <laughs> the home plate umpire is saying that it wasn't a foul ball, so. Foul ball. Is, I don't think Coach Renolette's going to be happy with this, but it clearly landed in foul territory. Doesn't matter if they touch the ball. Get your glasses off. You see better. So that's going to be a bloop hit. 
for Hopkins. Now my scoreboard's going to be all messed up. So scoring to tie the game, I think, was Landon Schrader. We are tied at four. Runners at the corners. First and third for Columbus Grove. I think Dalton Worse at the plate. Struck out his last at bat. Plasman comes set. Long look. Still looking. Steps off. It's a little bloop single for Kyle Hopkins. I mean, it clearly was a foul ball. Pitch is a strike. So that's an RBI for Hopkins on the last at bat. Scoreboard needs some correct. Deep fly ball to Mosier. He goes back. It's over his head. Scoring is Schrader with another run. Here comes Hopkins. He scores. Throw to third. Ward puts the tag on the runner. Not in time. Dalton Worth with a double and two runs batted in. We'll bring up Brenton Renner. Pitch swung on and missed. We'll check between innings. He's coming in. Check the official score. Maybe seven to four, but I'm not a thousand percent positive. It was such a mess there on that play that I think everybody just kind of got messed up what happened. Swung on a miss, strike two. Two outs, runner at third. Fourth, I think four runs here in the inning. Three or four, one or the other. Regardless, Columbus Grove has taken the lead. Pitch tapped foul on a play that appeared to be a foul ball down the right field line. Harris came in. Wimpkin went out. And McQuillan all kind of over there. Harris made an attempt. The ball was in foul territory. Plasman <laughs> fires it in there. And the batter asks for time with the last second. Brenton Renner. So the pitch does not count. Plasman's pitch swung on and fouled it or missed at the plate. Ball gets away from Wolfram. He fires down the first base in time to retire Renner. So the out officially goes 1 3. So Columbus Grove sends eight to the plate, and I believe they scored four runs unofficially. We'll get the official tally here in a second. Yeah. They did so on. <laughs> I think three hits, no Ram errors, and one left on base. After four and a half here at Tenora High School's Groove Field, it is the Columbus Grove Bulldogs seven, I think, and the Tenora Rams four. We'll be back after this time out here on your Drops on Pizzeria scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Back at Drew Field, John went down and officially checked. It is seven to four, so the Bulldogs with four runs that inning, and they lead the Rams seven to four with that four-run fifth. Well, hey, controversial play to say the least. We're not saying. I mean, Luke did not catch the ball. Regardless, that pitch was a ball to Radzik. One-zero pitch from Renner, outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. So the batter still has another at bat, regardless of if Harris catches the ball or not. It was still a foul ball, but he allowed all the runs to score. There afterwards is a whole other story. Swung on and missed by Radzik. Good cut. Renner comes set. One-two pitch. 
High pop. Foul territory, first baseman over there, puts it away. Isaac Ricker retires Radzik for the first out in the fifth. Now at the plate, number 15, Dalton Wolfram. Dalton Wolfram checks in. 7-4, Columbus Grove with the lead over the Rams. Now Wolfram checks in. Back-to-back -back RBI singles for Dalton. He's two for two with two runs batted in. It's the outside corner strike called on Dalton. Pitch to Dalton. That's a little bit low, I guess. One ball, one strike, one out. Nobody on. Rams now trail seven to four as they bat here in the bottom of the fifth. Pitch is a bit high and inside. Two balls and one strike. Now that they got to meet, we're sure they're fine. Renner winds it up. 2-1. Strike call on the outside corner. Wolfram doesn't think so. Has to go back in. I don't know that. I don't think I caught it on video, unfortunately. So you can't go back and watch it. But 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Wolfram. That's low and outside. Count goes full to the Rams catcher, Dalton Wolfram. Player of the week last week from Northwest Ohio Sports. Swung on and missed. Down goes Wolfram for out number two. Make sure you get over there and like NWO Sports on all social media platforms. Have our football season in our weekly podcast just around the corner. Started that last year. Thoroughly enjoyed that. Karen Ward steps in. First pitch to Taryn is inside. Ball one. Karen struck out in the first and walked in the third. Runner winds it up. Pitch is outside corner. Strike called. One ball and one strike to the Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. Senior Ward bats from the right side. Pitch really outside corner. One ball and two strikes to Taryn. Yeah, he's now on that outside corner. One, two, pitch to Renner. Ward drills at center field. That's over the head of the center fielder. Hoffman's got to chase it all the way to the fence. Ward rounds first, hits second. He's going to hold up there with a stand-up double. So Ward drills one in the gap with two outs to put a runner in scoring position. He's going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris going to step in. Singled his last plate appearance. He is one for two, grounded to short in the first. Renner looks into the dugout. Couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> with the count. And Coach <coughs> Braden Sauter is going to stick with him. Now he's <coughs> catcher. Landon Schrader is going to go out and have a conversation with him. Runner a second. This may change up the signs just a bit here. Harris steps in with the runner in scoring position with the Rams trailing 7 to 4 here in the bottom of the fifth. Brenton Renner comes set. First pitch to Harris. Catches the outside corner. Strike one. What? It depends. It depends on the situation. I know, but a lot of times... Oh, one pitch coming to Harris from Renner. Yeah. Nice breaking ball. Caught the corner. Strike two. Harris falls behind quickly. No balls and two strikes. We'll be back here tomorrow. Double header, basically. Lady Rams next door, and we'll have that game, and then we'll have the game here as well. Harris, little tapper. Third base side. Runner comes off the mound, fields it, throw to first base. Not in time. Harris beats it out. Harris with a little dribbler. Third base side. Runner hopped off the mound, fielded it, fired over to first base to Ricker, but not before Harris was over the bag. So Rams with runners at first and third. With two out, Hunter Bosselman is going to step in. Bosselman walked in the second and had an RBI in the third. The ground ball fielder's choice to the first baseman with the bases loaded. Pitch to Hunter, strike called. Up the outside corner. Runner is sitting that corner. 
Bosselman drills it deep right field. That goes to right fielder. Can't make the play. Scoring is Ward. Here comes Harris. Harris rounds third. A throw to the plate. Not in time. Harris with the head first dive. Scores. Rams right back in the game. Trail 7-6. Hunter Bosselman with an opposite field double. Scoring Ward and Harris. <sighs> Going to bring up Mason McQuillan with a tying run at second base. McQuillan get the start at second here tonight. I told you one. <laughs> Throw back to second. Bosselman with a head first dive. McQuillan last at bat did not go very well for Mason. Rams had a suicide squeeze on. He bunted the ball back to the pitcher. Who then fired back to third base for a double play. Pitch to McQuillan is outside. Brent Renner, long look in, gets a sign from Schrader. Come set, pitch, fouled off first base side. <laughs> Long run for right fielder Kyle Hopkins. He did like a 50 yard dash there. <laughs> Rams trail 7 to 6 here in the bottom of the fifth. Have the tying run down to second base. McQuillan at the dish with a one ball, two strike count. Eli Plasman awaits on deck for the Rams. One two pitch swung on low tapper third base side third baseman Schrader up with it throws over in time to get McQuillan for out number three five three on the put out the Rams hop right back into the game they do so on that two out two run double by Hunter Bosselman they score two runs in the inning and they do so on three hits Rams leave one on base and no errors in the inning by Columbus Grove. After five innings of play here at Sonora High School's Groove Field, drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Columbus Grove 7 and the Sonora Rams 6. Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Tenor Athletic Boosters, say go Rams! Top of the six we go, eight, nine, and one for the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. Last inning, they sent eight to the plate and scored four runs. A little controversial play involved in there, but it's over and done with. And the Rams trail seven to six. They led going into that inning by a score of four to three. A little shallow fly ball down the right field line was foul by about a foot. I don't know if the first bay or the, uh, the f umpire, the field umpire, was behind the mound, in between the mound and second base, so he couldn't see it. Or the home plate umpire, I don't know, I assume he was shielded by something, did not see the ball land in foul territory, and four runs scored thereafter. Plasman has gone the distance for the Rams. He winds it up. The first pitch is a ball to... Isaac Ricker. Go to. Ricker singled and scored in the third and grounded out to first base. That's a heck of a play by Tyler Wimpkin in the fourth. First of the pitch. Grounded shortstop side. Radzik rifles it over to Wimpkin in time to get Ricker for out number one. We'll bring up the number nine hitter, Landon Schrader. Schrader Single and scored in the fifth. He is one for two here on this Friday after, I guess, early evening now. Plasman's pitch tapped outside of the third base bag. Coach Sauter puts the arm out there, does not field it wisely. <laughs> As I bring up every now and then, Coach Tipton did that last year and wound up with a handful of bruised fingers. 
Plasmans 0-1 to Schrader is side tilt even one ball and one strike to the number nine hitter Landon Schrader. Two. One one pitch from Plasman. A little blooper behind the bag of second. Radzik puts it away for out number two. Six unassisted on the put out. Top of the lineup. Brock Huffman. Huffman singled and scored in the third. And popped out to Caden Radzik in the fifth. Nice play by Radzik. Went out in shell left field to put it away. Last inning. Plasman's pitch. Hit in the right to center gap. Actually, it's not. <laughs> Logan McQuillan. For Logan McQuillan, Mason. <laughs> Logan is playing tomorrow. Mason McQuillan. The leaping grab in shallow right field to snag the Hoffman soft liner. Like it was headed to the right center gap out there. But Mason retreated, leaped, put it away, and did a little tumble after it. So four unassisted on the putout. Headed in the inning for uh, Columbus Grove. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and the Bulldogs leave none on base. Headed to the bottom of the sixth here at Groove Field. Columbus Grove Bulldogs six or seven in the Toronto Rams six. We'll be back after these timeouts. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Bottom of the six we go. 7-6 Bulldogs. Nice play to win that inning by Mason McQuillan. Both Mason and Logan play second base. Logan will be here tomorrow at 11 o'clock versus Swan Senior Day for the Lady Rams. First pitch to Plasman, swung on and missed. Renton Renner has gone the distance for the Bulldogs. Renner winds it up. Pitch to Plasman, fouled off first base side. No balls and two strikes. So senior day at 11 o'clock, Swanton Bulldogs come in to play. And ironically, on the 12th, later Rams play Swanton in the sectional opener. Pitches outside. One ball and two strikes to Eli Plasman. So I'm not sure what exactly you're going to see tomorrow. It's a softball diamond next door. One, two pitch. Plasman throws the bat on the ball and the lands in center field. Eli Plasman on the one, two pitch literally just tossed the bat out at the ball and he blooped it in the center field for a leadoff single. So the tying run is at first base. Connor Wolfram's going to pinch run for Eli Plasman. Going to bring up Grady Gusweiler. Grady is 0 for 2. Batting ninth and playing in the center field. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on Snow Rams Live. Heck of a game so far. 7-6 Bulldogs. Columbus Grove 16-4 in the most recent Ohio State baseball coaches poll or 10th in the state. Renner from the stretch comes set. First pitch outside, throw down to first base. Not in time as Wolfram dives back. A little short hop throw down there from Landon Schrader. Isaac Ricker scooped it off the turf here. Renner comes set, looks at Wolfram at first. He stays put. Pitch to Gus Weiler's call to strike. One ball and one strike to Grady. Rams have the tying run at first with nobody out. Top of the lineup, Aiden Moser on deck. We're over. Wolfram dies back in head first safely. Coach Tipton over there at first. Coach Renolette at third. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Gus Weiler. Outside, two balls and one strike to Grady. 
and just get it right. They're trying to make stuff up. Renner checks Connor Wolfram at first. Come set. 2-1 pitch to Gus Weiler. A little bit low. Ball three. Three balls and one strike to Grady Gus Weiler. Seven six Bulldogs, bottom of the sixth. Nobody out. Wolfram leads away from first. Pitch inside. Gus Weiler spins out of the way. So Connor trots down to second. Grady trots down to first. Rams bring up Aiden Mosier. And the way Mosier's been buttoned here lately, he's going to put this one down the third base line. And he's beat quite a few of these out here in the last week. Coach Braden Sauter is going to go out and have a conversation with his senior starter, Brenton Renner. And Renner may have reached his pitch limit. We'll see. Coach Sauter standing on the first base side of the mound, having a conversation with his infield, along with his starter, Renner. 7-6 Bulldogs of Columbus Grove. They lead by one. Bottom of the sixth inning. The Rams have runners at first and second with nobody out. Top of the lineup. Aiden Mosier getting ready to step in. Mosier is one for three with a single and a stolen base and a run scored in the third. So... Really, if there's anybody you want up in this situation here to advance runners, it's your leadoff hitter, Aiden Mosier. Third baseman, Taylor Schrader, playing about a foot behind the base at third. First baseman, Isaac Ricker, playing at the what would be the cut of the grass. Turf here on the infield at Sonora High School. Renner comes set. Mosier squares around the butt, butts at third base side. Throw down to first. Mosier called out at first base, but he does what he's supposed to do. Advances the runner on a bang-bang play down there at first base. Wolfram goes down to third. Grady Gusweiler goes down to second. Mosier out one to three for the first out here. Your shortstop, Caden Radzik, steps in. Radzik has scored two runs. Radzik asks for time. He steps out. Reached on an error in the first, Caden did, and scored. Reached on a fielder's choice in the third and scored a run. First pitch coming to Radzik. Breaking ball outside corner, strike one. Rams have the tying run at third, the go ahead run at second. One out here, they trail seven to six. Brent Renner winds it up. Pitch to Caden. Skies it. First base side infielder. Her first baseman puts it away. Isaac Ricker snags it off the bat of Radzik for out number two. F3 on the put out. Dalton Wolfram steps in. Dalton, two for three. Two singles and two runs batted in. Dalton struck out his last plate appearance. Dalton just as hot as anybody else for the Rams in the last week as well. Brent Renner gets the sign, works out of the windup. Pitch to Dalton is a strike called. Well, hit like you can. Connor Wolfram at third. Grady Gusweiler at second. Two outs now. 0 oh, 1 pitch coming from Renner to Dalton Wolfram way outside. One ball and one strike. Karen Ward awaits on deck for the Rams as they trail by one here in the bottom of the sixth. 1 1 pitch to Dalton. High ball two. Two balls and a strike to the Rams backstop, Dalton Wolfram. Heck of a wrestling career by Dalton as well. Something good right here. Something good to hit right here. Two one pitch, breaking ball catches the inside corner. Strike called, two balls and two strikes to Dalton Wolfram. Renton Renner works out of the windup with the runner at third. Two two pitch to Dalton, way outside, ball three. Count goes full to Dalton Wolfram. Runners on second and third with two outs here in the bottom of the six. Rams trail 7-6. Renner, long look in, gets the sign from Landon Schrader, winds it up. Payoff pitch. Hit right field. He trouble. He trouble. Falls in front of the right fielder. Scoring is Connor Wolfram. Here comes Grady Gusweiler. Head first dive into second base. 
for Dalton Wolfram. Two runs batted in, scoring Connor and Gus Weiler. Rams lead 8 7. Huge two out hit for Connor Wolfram. Ball fell in front of Kyle Hopkins. Hopkins went over there to snag it, just couldn't get there in time. Timeout on the field. Going to have a pitching change. Rams with the 8-7 lead here in the bottom of the six. We'll be back with all the changes, and we will do so right after this timeout. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back here at Groove Field, Dalton Wolfram with a huge two-out, three-two count opposite field double. Scoring Connor Wolfram and Grady Gusweiler to give the Rams a 8-7 to seven lead. New pitcher for Columbus Grove is Evan Sauter. So Evan Sauter comes on. He's pitched nine innings. He's allowed seven hits. He's walked six. He struck out 14. Hit a batter. He's allowed seven runs, six earned runs. ERA of 4.76. So Evan Sauter on in relief of Renton Renner. Five and two-thirds for Renner. He's responsible for the runner at second Wolfram. Seven runs, 11 hits, two errors for Columbus Grove. For the Rams, eight runs, 10 hits, and errorless ball. Knock on wood for the Rams. Taryn Ward going to step in with the runner at second base. So Taryn. Taryn Ward. Struck out in the first, walked in the third, doubled and scored in the fifth. What a heck of a high school baseball game. Dalton Wolfram leads away from second. Evan Sauter comes set. First pitch to Taryn Ward. Outside ball one. Taryn last season down the stretch was one of the more clutch hitters for the Rams baseball team as a junior. Picked that up as his senior season has progressed. There goes the runner, throw down the third. Goes into left field. Wolfram pops up. He's going to score. That's a huge run for the Rams. Dalton Wolfram with a straight steal of third base. Throw by Schrader went into left field for the second time tonight. So Wolfram scores the third run. Rams now lead 9-7. to seven. Pitch to Ward is outside. Three balls and no strikes to Taron. Sauter's pitch. That one catches the corner. So the Rams kind of giving Columbus Grove a little bit of their own medicine on the stolen base front. 3-1 pitch to Taron inside. Ball four. So Ward trots down the first base on the walk. We said Columbus Grove, for those of you just joining us, Columbus Grove with 100 stolen bases on the season entering this game. 20 games, five steals per game. Luke Harris steps in. Harris singled and scored in the fifth, singled in the third. Two for three for Luke. First pitch to Harris as a strike. Rams with three here in the sixth. Two out double. Two RBIs for Dalton Wolfram. 0-1 pitch from Sauter to Harris up and in. Count evens at one ball and one strike. And as John said, that's a gutsy play by Dalton Wolfram stealing third base right there. Throw goes into left field. Wolfram pops up. There goes Ward. Harris, ground ball, third base side. Third baseman Schrader backs up. Long throw across in time to get Harris. 
5-3 on the putout. The Rams do some damage. They score three runs in the inning, and they do so on two hits. Dalton Wolfram with a huge two-run double to give the Rams a 9-7 lead. There was one error in the inning for Columbus Grove, and the Rams leave one on base. Heading to the seventh here at Groove Field. Rams 9, Columbus Grove 7. We'll be back right after this time out. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Top of the seventh we go. Eli Plasman has gone the distance, and he is going to be out there for at least the start of the seventh. Had activity in the Rams' bullpen earlier. For Columbus Grove, two, three, and four. Hawker, Burnesser, and Taylor Schrader. To face Eli Plasma, nine, seven Rams as we head here to the Bottom or bottom top of inning seven. Plasman winds it up. First pitch to Shep. Deep fly ball left field. Moser giving chase in foul territory. Leaps up. Oh! Puts the glove up and he hits the fence over there. Moser's all right. BR comes running out of the dugout to make sure he's okay. Moser with a heck of a run. That fence kind of comes in a little bit out there once it comes into foul territory. Mosier comes in to check with Coach Renolette. Mosier on his horse. Trying to track down that deep fly ball by Shep. And crashed into the fence in foul territory. No balls in, one strike to Shep Hawker. Hawker 419 coming in has back to back doubles doubled in the third, doubled in the fifth had an RBI in the third and scored a run in the fifth Plasman winds it up, his 0-1 to Hawker is outside, count evens one ball and one strike so we said tomorrow senior day here for the Lady Rams next door Tenora boys here versus Patrick Henry Plasman long look in, gets the sign from Dalton Wolfram, his 1-1 pitch to Hawkler, drills it to Mosier, Mosier <laughs> reaches up, puts it away, stumbles, lands on his backside for out number one. little adventure out there by Aiden Mosier here, this, <laughs> this at bat, but he got the out. Bo Bernesser steps in, and then the RBI single in the third, Stole the base in the third. He is officially one for three here tonight. One out here in the seventh. Nine seven. Rams lead by two. Pitch drilled in the gap. Mosier giving chase. That one's over his head. Heads to the wall. Gus Weiler scoops it up. He fires it back into Radzik, but not before. Bernesser has a one out double. Second hit of the night for. Burnesser. Taylor Schrader is going to step in. Schrader with a solo home run in the second. Singled and scored a run in the fifth. Plasman still on the mound. Glances into the dugout. BR pacing as always in there. <laughs> Rams lead by two. 9-7 here in the seventh. Pitch outside. Ball one to the number four hitter, Taylor Schrader. 300 on the season for Schrader. 15, 16 runs batted in now. Pitch is outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Plasman glances in the dugout. Glances again. 2-0 pitch coming. That's outside. Catches the corner. 
Two balls and one strike to the cleanup hitter, Taylor Schrader. Schrader, two home runs on the season now. Plasman's 2-1 to Schrader. Just misses the outside corner. Goes to three balls and one strike. Plasman can't believe it. Nobody's buying the home plate umpire's supper on either side tonight, I don't believe. 3-1 <laughs> pitch coming to Schrader. Way outside, ball four. So Taylor Schrader trots down the first base with the walk. I don't know if that was the intentional, unintentional walk, but it looked to be like Plasma was pitching around Schrader. That's going to bring up the number five hitter, Kyler Hopkins. Coach Ronalette's going to go to the mound and have a conversation with his infield and Eli Plasman. Hopkins with a single and a run batted in in the fifth. He is officially one for three. That fifth inning was when Columbus Grove scored those bizarre four runs on what appeared to be a foul ball down the right field line that the umpire either didn't see it as our guess, but it clearly landed about a foot foul. Harris come running in, couldn't make the play. But everybody kind of just went back to their positions, and the umpire said it was a fair ball. And thereafter, Columbus Grove plated four runs to grab at the time. Three-run lead. Rams now lead 9-7. to seven. Sticky situation here as the conversation's over. One out here, Columbus Grove with runners at first and second. Kyle Hopkins at the plate. Plasman comes set. Pitch to Hopkins. Outside strike one. Caught the outside corner. Dalton Worth on deck. I mean, nice time for a ground ball to Radzik is short to turn a double play. Plasman looks at the runner a second. 0-1 pitch. Swung on and miss. Plasman quickly ahead of Hopkins. No balls and two strikes. Hopkins struck out in the second. Plasman comes set, checks the runners, steps off. O2 pitch. Yeah. Oh, strike three called on the outside corner. For a second, I didn't think the umpire was going to give it to him. A little delayed call there by the home plate umpire. So Kyle Hopkins out number two. Number six there, Dalton Worth comes in. He is one for three with a two RBI double in the fifth. Runners lead from first and second pitch. A little bit low and outside. One ball and no strikes to the number six hitter, Dalton Worth. Rams with a two-run lead here, nine to seven. Columbus Grove batting in the top of the seventh. Plasman comes set. Pitch is nice stop again. By Dalton Wolfram. Seven runs, 12 hits, three errors for Columbus Grove. Nine runs, 10 hits, airless ball for the Rams. Throw to first base. Wimpkin snuck behind the runner. A good throw, and they would have had the runner picked off at first base. Timing play over there. Schrader just ahead of the throw. Pitch by Plasman. Strike call. Two balls and one strike to Worth. Runners lead from first and second for the Bulldogs. Plasman's 2-1 pitch. Swung on. Fouled out of play. Third base side. Bulldogs down to their last strike and last out. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. They trail by two. Two runners on at first and second. Burness are on at second. Taylor Schrader on at first. 2 2 pitch from Plasman coming to Worth. Drills it just outside the line. Down the left field side. That would have scored two and tied the game. Worth just a fraction ahead of the Plasman pitch. Give that same pitch right here. Same pitch. 2 2 pitch coming. Runners go back to their bases. They take their leads. 
Hit there you go. Shortstop side. Radzik scoops it up. Attaboy. Throws the third in time. Ward with the foot on the bag takes the throw from Radzik to retire. The Bulldogs and the Rams come away with a thrilling 9 7 win. Nice play by Radzik. Slid deep in the hole. Ward on the bag at third. Took the throw from Radzik to force out Burnesser at third. In the inning, the Bulldogs of Columbus Grove threaten. But two runners on, and they cannot score. No runs for the Bulldogs. One hit. No Ram errors, and they leave two. Final from Tenora. Rams win 9-7. Tenora improves to 13-3 on the season. And the Columbus Grove Bulldogs fall to 16-5. and five. Like I said, what a heck of a high school baseball game. We'll be back and sum all this up the best we can on the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show. And we'll do it right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenor Rams athletes this season. Back here at Groove Field. Rams with a thrilling 9-7 win over the state-ranked Columbus Bulldogs. Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Seven runs, 12 hits, three huge errors for the Bulldogs. And for Tenora, nine runs, 10 hits. And the Rams did not commit an error. Rams started the contest with a unearned run in the first. Caden Radzik scored. Rams came back with three in the third. RBI by Dalton Wolfram. Actually, Dalton had both RBIs in the first and third innings. Columbus Grove with two runs in the third. Actually, a solo home run in the second by Taylor Schrader tied the game at one. Bulldogs went ahead in the third. Four huge runs in the fifth for Columbus Grove. He said that play that actually, unfortunately, I don't have on video, but it appeared to be a foul ball. And the umpire ruled it fair down the right field line. And they scored four runs on the play, or in that inning, but that just catapulted the four runs for the Bulldogs. And Eli Plasman held on. Got the win, but Dalton Wolfram with came up with the Rams trailing in the sixth inning by one. Had a 3-2 pitch and drilled an opposite field double, scoring two runs to give the Rams a lead. Dalton on second base, stole third base. Throw from the catcher, sailed into left field, and Wolfram popped up and scored. So a heck of a game by Dalton Wolfram. But the Rams pick up their 13th win. Proved to 13-3. and three. As We said uh, Columbus Grove falls to 16-5. and five. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. And we will do so right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street, right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Play of the game award higby embroidery of defiance welcome back to tenora high school rams with a thrilling 9-7 come from behind victory welcome to the higby embroidery player of the game 
And if you listened or watched the entire game, pretty much summed up our player of the game. Could only go to none other than Rams catcher Dalton Wolfram. Wolfram with an RBI single and a stolen base in the first. Came up, had a RBI single, stole another base in the third. And in the sixth, Wolfram with a huge double, scoring two, stole third base. There's a throwing error on the on that stolen base attempt. And Dalton popped up and scored another run. So Dalton, Wolfram, is your Higby Embroidery player of the game. A heck of a game by Dalton. Had two player of the game awards last week. And picks up one here on this Friday night. Just a beautiful night for baseball here at Sonora High School. Is 71 degrees on your David Frank weather first pitch. So thanks for joining us. We'll be here tomorrow at 11 o'clock where the Rams will host Patrick Henry. And we'll have a doubleheader, as we said. Kylie will have the girls game next door. Senior day for the Lady Rams. And we'll have the boys game here versus a very good Patrick Henry ball club. So Eli Plasman gets the win for the Rams. And the tough luck loss goes to Brenton Renner. But again, this is a, this is a very good Friday night high school baseball game, to say the least. So final again, 9-7. Rams with their 13th victory. Thanks for watching and viewing. Thanks to our sponsors, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza, and they. Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Snow Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Midlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley, Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and finally, Mayfield Engineer Company. Start your MEC career now. It's a $1,000 sign-on bonus. Go to MECCareers.com and check that out. So, we'll be back here tomorrow again versus Patrick Henry. Three, or 13-3. and three. Patrick Henry will face the 13-3 and three Rams. Patrick Henry possibly could be playing today. It could have another win or loss, but we'll update that tomorrow. But thanks for joining us. Rams with a thriller. Dalton Wolf from your player of the game. Eli Plasman with the win. Have a good night, everybody. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419 419- 428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.